Hi, I'd like to talk to you about synthetic image generation with Gen AI. So, who am I? I'm Oliver Schmidt, the uh, Gen AI lead for the Liquid Studios in ASG market region. And I have to hit the right button, yes. Um, what is the Liquid Studio? Liquid Studio is, is one sort of the innovation branch of Accenture and we are supposed to be the team that does rapid prototyping innovation topics at the client and helps the client to discover, innovate and deliver POCs at the early stages of the technology. And right now we fit by Gen AI and all we do is Gen AI related. So I'm as a Gen AI lead, newly um, developed team in, in our uh, department, quite busy right now. And before that, one of our focus points was computer vision. And with computer vision, we have really a big potential in the Gen AI developments recently. I'm not going to tell you about Gen AI at all. I think the hype is really made the way up to everybody. Um, but the generative AI is not really new. For our purposes in computer vision, we talk about diffusion models, and diffusion models are more than eight years uh, old already, well established, but only with the recent developments in the amount of data you use and the whole different approaches in the instructional capabilities you now get on top of it, you can go into completely new direction. So what does Accenture offer in computer vision? We developed um, a full end-to-end -end pipeline we call a computer vision factory to really help the client from the data creation with the process around and the um, develop, uh, deployment on the edge to everything. And one of the biggest issues you always have by delivering computer vision on a big scale to clients is your data is simply not there in a really good state. The, most, the, the highest effort is not the training, the highest effort is gathering your training data. And it's just extremely, yeah, and in front of the screen, um, it's extremely time consuming and costly. And one of the biggest issues here is that in manufacturing, the suppliers usually in quality inspection use cases send you products that don't have defects because otherwise they are not good suppliers. So have a good in, uh, having a good representation of defect categories to not have an imbalance of your class is key to good computer vision use cases there. there. And we are simply thinking about prompting parts of your data set. That's what we are doing right now. And why does this work? Um, the, and not why does this work. Um, the issue right now, the manual process is drawing pixels on synthetic images or waiting long enough until you have enough real world images. Both is really not working for a lot of business cases. So computer vision would, apply, would, would work really nicely in a lot of use cases where you have a high vari um, variation of um, products, but you're just not able to spend so much money of creating your data set. Our approach now is to just use a few pictures prompt your data set with the right representation of your defect categories and then train your model ongoing in a, in a bigger pipeline. And that reduces the amount for really having the best data set you can think of to reach the best accuracy to a fraction. We are talking about one project we are in the aviation industry right now where we made an offer with our new approach that is just 20% on the effort of previously with the old approach of drawing pixels, basically. And the client seems really happy about that. And we are, our first use case is we developed a POC with seeds in the aviation industry. And seeds are not the complica most complicated um, products you can think of. It's quite straightforward. You have faults and wrinkles, you have stitching errors. It, it's not hard to detect for computer vision, but the variation on the products hundreds of airlines, thousands of different seats variants make it not viable for computer vision at all in a classic method. But with the Gen AI approach, it works. How did we go there? We used a uh, standard AWS pipeline and applied uh, stable diffusion in various um, model architectures and also GANs to test out what works and what doesn't work. And we learned a lot. It was a, a really long road to, to be able to deliver our first end-to-end -end prototypes with um, prompting the data set. 
um, the learning curve and the uh, the knowledge about how to prompt properly and the uh, foundational model you use for your fine tuning is is key to this whole topic. And how does it look in the end if it works well? You can see the prompts of um, our own devices. We use the phone, um, for example, to create cracks. It's not perfect yet, but it works. And for example, we are also working for a luxury watchmaker. And um, on the left uh, button side, you see a watch with a red bracelet prompt. That we just changed the, the bracelet um, color with a simple prompt. And then you can prompt like, give me 500 pictures from different views and angles of this watch with a with red bracelet to train your model. And just a prompt, you get your data, you can push it into your training pipeline, the augmentation, everything gets automated. It's really just left for the data scientist, prompt, check, and push it in. And where it doesn't work, it looks like that. <laughs> On the upper left side, you see the model doesn't understand physics, so we created a broken cup but the coffee is still inside. That doesn't make sense at all. The top one meant the prompt was a broken cup. That's not how it works at all. And the right side, the laptop, we just said a crack in the screen and it looks like it was hit by an atomic bomb. So the issue here is controlling it. Stable diffusion makes it going crazy with the prompt and it's also meant to be like that. And for quality inspection use cases, we are going backwards to control it more. And there's also control net out there that's actually meant to be that solution for it. And for different use cases, products, you have to apply your way of using um, Gen AI for synthetic images. But the approach works and we are really happy about the first results. And yeah, computer vision is nowadays fun again and not grinding data sets manually over hours and weeks. Thanks for your attention.